Part of Relationships Radio Show is copyrighted. No one is to use any part of the show without express written consent from myself, Greg Tuzinski, or the Art of Relationships. Thank you. Welcome to the Art of Relationships Radio Show. Greg welcomes live calls from listeners in helping with numerous marital and relationship problems. There will be no more tit-for-tat arguments. Greg gets to the root of couples' challenges in a rapid, matter-of-fact format, plus applies compassion and humor. Join in discovering how to improve your relationship and your own life. Listen, laugh, and climax. Greg is a licensed professional counselor in the state of Michigan. To others, he's simply known as Detroit's love guru. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. It's uh, Greg Tuzinski, of course. Back again. It's hump night. Woohoo! Hopefully everybody's excited, wide awake. I uh, want to have uh, sort of an enlightening show this evening. Last uh, last week's show was, um, let's face it, it's a little off the hook, very unprofessional, but it was a lot of fun with the sexual slogans. Now we might have to take more of a serious role this evening and talk about communication. Everybody talks about, you know, we lack communication skills. Our communication sucks. Everything else is like a lot of people can have ha hallway sex, right? And I get this all the time. You know, you can walk by each other, F you, F you. You both understand each other. You both understand you're pissed. You're upset at each other, right? But what is the root of a lot of communication mishaps or a lot of uh, communication problems in relationships? What are they? Then we're going to talk about, you know, later on, going to talk about the end. Ooh, what happens if you know in your gut, in your heart, that's a relationship. You know what? It's just not working and that it is ending uh, for you, okay? What is it going to take for you, you know what, to maybe pull the plug or you're waiting for your other partner to pull the plug too? Sort of ironic that we're talking about this when, you know what, my passion is trying to help and save relationships and have them have a you know a deeper connection than they ever thought possible. So you know what, there are those times, you know, toxic situations to where you know what, maybe the relationship is just not healthy. And what do you do to end it? What are your fears? What are your maybe insecurities going about and the taboos about that as well? So we're going to talk about that the end of the show and as always people um you can hit me up through the discussion below as always throw out your questions throw out you know your statements your comments give me your ideas your topic ideas if you have any questions you want me to answer as always it does not have to relate to tonight's show topics at all okay i'm here the show the art of relationships radio show it's for you here to help you out there you know, hopefully, you know, solve or fix or enhance your relationship uh, challenges and your problems so you can live happier, healthier, more connected, and feeling more passionate, more in love. Right? Make sure, as always, my website is theartofrelationships.org. You can also give me a call. For those of you that are not too shy out there, give me a call, 313 614 94 Nine eight, and as always, you know what? It is above <laughs> the live video feed. You can see the call in number there, my website as well. And I want to welcome the new listeners, uh, new viewers to the show. And we already have some people in the house. Alyssa's in the house, Sarah. Welcome, woohoo! Throw out your questions. I want to hear your questions that you might be running into issues with, and where your communication aspects might be, you know what, let's face it, <laughs> might be having issues that, you know what, he just doesn't get you, ladies, or maybe, you know what, maybe he don't have a clue about what you mean and how it always ends up in arguments, tit for tat, and you end up hating each other. I, I deal with this on a daily basis, <clears throat> you know, in my office today, you know, clients, that same aspects, and you feel like the other person doesn't care about you, you know what, Greg, I'm not heard. I'm not listened to. Shuts me out. She shuts me out. Doesn't ever want to listen. Doesn't ever want to call themselves out. Uh, apologize. All this aspect sort of manifests itself 
and how you communicate with one another. And also, we can tie in self-esteem issues as well. So I'd love to hear your questions, your comments, people out there. As always, give me your ideas. Throw out questions to me. And if you're brave enough, not shy, give me a call. 313-614-9498. And as always, it is anonymous. So I won't throw your name out there over the air or live unless you gave me permission. And as always, you know, people you hear me mentioning their names and so forth, they have given me uh, permission to use their names before, okay? So we are going to get on to what are, what do you think are the main reasons or causes of the communication issues in your relationship, past, present, uh, maybe going to be future relationships? What are the issues? And the biggest thing is, you know, I, I run into <clears throat> that they're not being heard or a lot of things are taken out of context, okay? And then it blows up into arguments, yelling, screaming, even name-calling. And as people know, I say, you know, when you get in those arguments and you start flinging names at each other, calling each other names, and they're not so forth, you know, the names, oh, I love you, you're beautiful, you're hot. You know, you're a rotten son of a, you know what? You are a miserable, blah, 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 right? I wish I never married you. I wish I never got in a relationship with you. I should get a divorce. All these things, you know, the communication, what you're hearing and what you are saying, or I should say what the person you're relaying that message to is that you hate them. You want a divorce. Of course, right? They're going to take it literal, literally, and it's going to create a huge aspect, a huge, you know, fight and emotional disconnect. But... Can you speak from the heart, right, and say, you know what, I'm hurt, I feel disrespected. Those aspects, right, it could be hard, especially if you feel like you are not being loved. You feel like your partner doesn't care about you at all. And it's very, very difficult, right, to speak from the heart, your vulnerabilities, and get at the issues that are going on, especially if you feel not loved, not desired, and not maybe a priority and everything else. So what happens? You start getting angry. You start getting pissed off, all those aspects. So communication aspects, one, is you want to speak from the heart, right? You want to be vulnerable, but that doesn't make you weak, as I mentioned on numerous shows. You want to speak from the heart. And if they use that against you, right, they throw it in your face, let's face it, that happens, right? Then you start looking at, why is that person doing it? And maybe, you know what? Peace out. Maybe I shouldn't be in that situation. Maybe I need to be with somebody that's going to be more deserving of my love, my attention, okay? Uh, the other aspect is, I run into a lot, is you know self-esteem or self-confidence issues that get in the way of communication aspects. This is where the defensiveness comes in. They can't sit back, they can't stand their ground and say, you know what, what are you mad about? What did I do to piss you off? What did I do to hurt your feelings, to make you mad? So a lot of people, what happens is someone comes at you, your loved one comes at you, and they try to attack you, and right away we want to attack back, or we want to run and get the hell away from there, right? We don't want to get yelled at. But if we can stand our ground, our communication efforts can be a lot better, right? There, there's a lot of things, the fights and arguments are taken because things are taken out of context, right? They perceive them incorrectly. So what happens is, um, you know what, that's when that resentment starts setting in. And it's very, very difficult when names are thrown out. You don't feel safe. You don't want to communicate from the heart. You don't want to communicate in an essence to where you are heard. And you know what? Or maybe as soon as your partner opens their mouth, are you already getting defensive thinking you're going to get yelled at, getting called names, or it's just going to be nothing but getting yelled at and you're going to get berated, belittled, right? I get it. How many people have been in that situation and you know what? You just feel miserable, but you want to attack back and what happens? You know what? Bam! The disconnect sets in and you're already setting up almost a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Before anyone even speaks, you both are on edge. You both are sort of, you know what, on guard. You like got the claws out that you want to attack each other instead of looking at the hurt 
that is going on, right? That you don't feel a certain way. You don't feel love. You don't feel desired. You don't feel a priority or important or respected. Those are the elements of the communication aspects. Nothing is perfect, right? We're human. I'm human. We all have we all have our issues and our, you know, situations where, you know what, we say something that we wish we could take back that hinders the communication. It hinders the connection aspect between you and your partner. So you look at that when you come out, oh, we got more people in the house. Um, Heather's in the house. Hey, Heidi, Glenna, hi, uh, is all in the house. Welcome. And to new listeners out there, new viewers of the show, welcome to the Art of Relationships radio show. Um, I agree. And Heidi mentioned you can't communicate when you're scared. And this is part of when I talked about Heidi. I don't know if you caught that or not. I mentioned about confidence and you know, self-esteem issues play a role in communicating because you're afraid that, you know what, if you say something, you speak from the heart, it's not going to be heard, that you don't, you're not deserving enough or important enough to be heard. I get that. The other aspect you look at is, you know, maybe you're going to get bashed or get, you know, ripped apart as well. So you're scared and you're not able to speak about anything. So what happens is it's sort of like a wounded animal, if you will, um, you know, or traumatized that you're always on guard. You're always, you know, it's, if you want to say it's, you know, the, the fight or flight mechanism in humans and us, and I think not only in us, but in other mammals as well. So we either cower, run away from that distress, or we're going to argue and fight for our essence and not really listen and hear each other. So what happens is, you know, with the communication aspects, we, instead of hearing the person, we already start, you know, from what they're actually saying, what their intent is for our ears. And maybe how you intend something to be, it's taken out of context and it's already an attack. You know what? You're already on, they're not hearing you that, you know what, I feel hurt. Oh yeah, it's my fault. It's my fault, right? How many people jump the gun and you're, oh yeah, you're blaming me because you're hurt. I'm not saying that, right? I want you to say, I'm hurt. I just want you to hear me and try to connect with me. How many people can do that if they're scared or if they're angry or they don't feel like they're a priority to their partner? It's very, very difficult, okay? But it can be done. One thing you have to value yourself that your feelings are matter, that they do matter, I should say. Not only that, that you deserve to be vulnerable with your partner. You deserve to have your feelings heard and you own those feelings. Don't be afraid of them, right? And you're not allowing your partner to use them against you. You're not weak. You still are going to be strong, right? And a lot of people, you know, with communication issues in their relationship and the way you talk to one another, you know what they think? How many people, maybe you're out there, raise your hand, right? How many people out there that believe the loudest one wins, right? When there's an argument, whoever yells the loudest or whoever has the last word, we've all been there, right? Or maybe been in that situation or been on the receiving end of that, where those situations, they actually believe it. I'm going to have the last word in or I'm going to yell and scream the loudest and that way I'm heard. You know what? No, I want to be, I want to hear you. However, can you talk to me? Can you speak from the heart? How many people are able to do that, right? As Heidi mentioned, when you're scared or when you're, let's face it, when you're flatly pissed off, right? It's not that easy to do. Not at all, right? Um, I want to hear some more comments. Oh, Chrissy's in the house. Hey, hi, Chrissy. We have more people. For those just tuning in for the first time to the Art of Relationships radio show, I want to thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, give me a call. I'd love to hear your comments, your questions that you might have uh, at 313-614-9498. And as always, you can throw your comments, your questions down below in the uh, live discussion that's below the video here, okay? And we are talking to you in, <laughs> we are talking to you uh, live right now, talking about communication aspects and maybe what goes on 
and how to heal those and actually that you can hear each other without the resentment, without the anger aspect, and you can get more connected because you are going to be looking at the hurt of the person and looking at, you know, maybe where the resentment builds up. And there was a, a new couple I saw today earlier that they have a lot of resentments uh, that are built up from the past, and it is caused from a lack of communication. A lot of people, and I think, you know, listen, a uh, couple of viewers and stuff mentioned this in the discussion that, you know, when you're scared, you're not going to communicate that well, right? You're going to hide it. You're going to, you're going to bury those emotions, those feelings down below. And pretty soon, you know what? They build, they build, they build, and you can't take it anymore. And then they blow up, right? I, I don't want it to blow up. I, I tell people all the time, when you communicate, I want you to be able to talk about anything, no matter if it pisses each other off or hurts their feelings. The intent is that there's an issue, that you have a right to voice your opinion respectfully, and that you can speak from the heart on those elements, okay? And that, you know what? That you can handle it, and your partner can handle the truth element of those issues, okay? And you can talk about them without blowing up, without going you know, haywire and freaking going, freaking blowing up and pissed off and name calling all this stuff back and forth. Cheyenne, welcome. Hello. Thank you. Um, going to go on, uh, another comment. For example, you get into a new relationship and there is an issue you want to talk about, but you're guarded and expect a new person to respond how a past person did. How do you get around that? You know what? Heather, that, that's an awesome question because a lot of people, and you could be used, you know, we're, we're expected, our new partners, you know, new girlfriend, wives, whatever, uh, boyfriends, that we get to the situation that we expect them to do what our previous partner did, right? So what happens is, right, and this could go with the same, not only communication aspects, what about, you know, you got cheated on by an ex, now you're going to assume or carry that baggage with you that your new partner is going to cheat on you. And it's almost like you're already setting it up um, to have issues in the relationship. So this is a great question. One thing about this is try a lot of self-talk, okay? A lot of self-talk and where, you know what, this is a different person. I don't want this anymore, but you know what, I'm going to handle it different. Even if they do blow up, that new part person Glad I can talk. That new person is going to blow up. That new person is going to get mad, angry, whatever, defensive. That, you know what, you can handle it, and you're going to speak from the heart. So you're also going to learn from that past relationship. Even if they blew, blow up at you, that new person, you know what, I get you're upset, but I want you to be able to hear me, and I want us to be able to talk about anything. And you know what, that we should be able to hear each other without getting angry, whatever. And if that person doesn't learn or doesn't listen, doesn't want to evolve with you, then, you know what, then you look at maybe they're not that right person. Maybe you don't want to get in that pattern again with that new person. Maybe it just is not going to work out for you. It sounds simple, right? But when matters of the heart sink in and this goes in play where, Maybe you are afraid they're going to react. So when there is an issue, as you said, Heather, you're going to be guarded. And I'm not going to talk about this because you're already anticipating what that other person's going to do. You know, they're going to yell, scream, call you names. I don't want that at all. And I want you to command respect. And also, if they do yell and scream and call you names, you know what? Maybe you need to school them that that's not going to be tolerated. And they need to change their tone for one thing. And you want to be heard, and it's important that you be heard and that you're able to feel safe and vulnerable and talk about anything with your partner. And if they're not able to do that, then maybe they're not the partner for you, right? Again, you know, very blunt, very maybe nonchalant, but it's got to be done, right? It's, it's a way to, that you communicate your self-respect, right? You're communicating that, which is huge. That's important. Plus, you're, you're setting boundaries for yourself. You're communicating those boundaries for you, what you want, what you desire, and what's important to you that you feel safe. And you have a right to communicate that. What that person does with that, that's on them, okay? That is huge. That is on them. 
So you need to put that responsibility on them. Now, how you deliver that message, if you're yelling and screaming and all them at them and expect them to maybe take it and be calm, that's where you need to work on your delivery. And maybe in your past relationship or marriage, maybe you need to look at how you can communicate the message better and speak, like I said, you speak from underneath, speak from the heart versus the anger and, you know, the defensive aspects and insecurities that come out. We're not perfect. I get it. You know, we all have issues. But if we do blow up, we also need to own that and communicate. You know what? I'm so sorry. I was mad. I shouldn't have called you a name. I should have. But then you need to work on not doing it again, right? You communicate. When you communicate, when you say you're sorry, right? You need to stop or work your butt off to stop doing this, that issue or that item or that behavior that you're sorry for or pretty soon that damn uh, sorry don't mean anything, right? And part of the communication aspects, of course, are the nonverbals, right? If you go, you know what, I'm sorry, and you roll your eyes, those type of aspects, right? Or if they're listening, what if you're trying to listen to somebody and they're, you're talking to them and you're like, oh, God, like you're annoyed. Oh, hurry up, get this over with, right? Oh, jeez. You know what? Oh, you're giving me a headache. You know what? That is communicating to them that you don't want to listen to them, right? Or maybe you've been in that situation where you don't want, you feel like you don't want to be listened to. So those elements are very, very crucial and they're important to relay, right? So communication is not only voice tone, not only the words you use, but as most people know, it's also the attentiveness through the nonverbal aspects. Are you paying attention? Are you looking away while they're talking to you? Are you, and someone mentioned, hey, Michelle, welcome. Uh, we sit on our phones, you know, while someone's talking to you, that they're sitting on their phones. I had a new couple here um, the other day that during session, you know, he's talking to her and she's looking on her phone, like, you know, whatever. And that relays that she isn't interested in what he's saying, doesn't care what he's saying, and, let, you know, it's disrespectful. So that is another aspect, too. Well, I can listen and be on my phone at the same time. Maybe so. You know, maybe you're talented, okay? But what that relays is, is that they, you're not giving your full attention. You're communicating that you are not giving your full attention to your partner, okay? And you have a right to be able to voice, you know what, I want. I deserve your full attention. It's important to me. Again, you're not getting mad. You're speaking from the heart and you're commanding respect. Got it? But also, if you are one that's always on your phone, um, not listening or listening half-ass aspects, you need to put that phone down and be attentive, okay? So communication issues, and when they come up, it is nonverbals, the eye rolls, the slouching, the, oh, God, you know what, you're annoying me, that type of thing, the nonverbals, voice tone, the words you hear, those all relay into, you know, how you can communicate with each other one enough. Now, if you show, if your partner is, you know what, it really hurt that you said that or that you called me that or that you're not listening, can you be empathetic. You know what? It's my bad. I'm sorry. I want to listen. I want to do a better job at you. You can do that with the nonverbals too. Your facial expressions, right? How your eyes are caring, compassionate, that you actually give a shit, people. It's important, okay? So all these, you know, tie in together. And I want you to do, you know, do a self-assessment how well you communicate or do you flip off and get angry all the time versus speaking from the heart. And also, how can you teach, you know, your partner to be a better communicator as well, where you are able to listen to one another? Sh shit, have them watch the video, right? <laughs> right here. <laughs> and also, um, you know, to be real, to be genuine, right? If you act annoyed when everybody's talking or your partner's talking to you, they're going to shut down, okay? And we all know that the same thing with the silent treatment, when there's no communication, right? That saying a lot means there's issues. Your partner is either hurt, angry, not feeling love, whatever. So what do we, what goes on? I get couples all the time where they don't talk for three days. I had a new couple today 
that mention that. That's what got them here. For three days, they don't talk. One wants to move out or thinking of that because they don't talk. They're afraid to talk because of, said it, right? They're not speaking from their heart. Or one is, the other one gets defensive, doesn't want to listen. So they both shut down. They don't want to say anything. Neither one of them want to rock the boat and take the risk to go back after it and speak, you know what, I'm sorry, I hurt you. I don't want to hurt you. I was hurt too, but that doesn't give me a right to call you names. It doesn't give me a right to yell at you. You can do this and be, you know, more mature and evolve more confidently when it comes to communication, okay? <clears throat> I am going to take a short little breather, and I will be back shortly. Do not go anywhere. This is going to stay live. I'm late coming. Hey, Stacy, welcome. Nice seeing you here as always. So I'll be back in a few moments, people. Do not go anywhere. I'll be right here live, okay? I'll see you very, very soon. Peace. This is just another song. I've never heard about a girl I've never met. This is just another lie whispered in your ear so you'll think that I can make. This is just another ride taken by surprise with no clear end in sight. This is just an empty line you've heard a million times that I've used to make it right. Chance meeting in a parking lot. Getting high off of a pointless talk You remind me of the songs I used to fall asleep to A perfect vision of the nowadays that I would sing to And I've been using every trick I know To send a message through the radio This is just a sad attempt An evening spent at trying to catch your eye Can you sneak a ride in out? But attention so you don't just pass me by This is just a lucid dream I've made the seem like the best parts of life This is just an empty hand With spaces for your fingers laced with mine Excuse me, I think you're the one I'm meant to find in this life But I've been lost for quite a while Cause you remind me of the sun I used to fall asleep to The perfect vision of the nowadays that I would seem to And I've been using every trick I know To send a message through the radio and I don't be a stranger trying to find the same kind of thrill that you provide. I'll leave it alone. I'll give it some time. And I've been writing for hours, living a life. The dreams in which we collide Where everything is black and white But you're so alive But I've been down
trick I know to send a message through the radio. And I'm back, everybody. How's everybody doing? It's Wednesday, it's hump night. And this is the Art of Relationships radio show. We're back after a quick break. That was Skyway Traffic. Just another song you'll never hear. Check them out on Reverb Nation, YouTube as well, and Facebook as well. Um, Skyway Traffic. Check them out. Local uh, Metro Detroit area uh, singer, musician. Uh, actually, he's very talented. He happened to be a student of mine, a college student of mine. Uh, a little way back, he's a great guy too. So check him out, Skyway Traffic. And we are back talking about communication. <laughs> Some people already uh, making fun of me because I put a piece of paper up over the during the break. <laughs> put a piece of paper up over uh, the web ca the camera during break. Sure, rip on me. You know what? I don't care. I can handle it. I love laughing. I love joking around. But it's it's funny how you know what even. You know, how many people you joke around, I can be a smart ass, people that know me, I love joking around, but I don't want to be offensive, I don't want to be disrespectful to anybody, and what happens, part of the communication aspects and relationships, you know, what happens is, what when you go after, you know, you might be joking around with somebody, playing, and all of a sudden, they get defensive, right, what do you do when you communicate those aspects, oh, oh my god, could be in a baby, right? I was just joking, quit being a baby. Oh my God, grow up. I was just kidding. No, you want to own, you know what? I didn't mean to hurt you. I didn't mean to offend you, disrespect you, hon. You know what? My bad. I, that wasn't my intent. I was joking around. I know I, my bad. I apologize. You want to own it, right? Your intent was to joke around, whatever, even though they didn't take it. You don't want to bash that other part, person again. That's you being a jerk. That's you being, you know what, being defensive back how they responded, only joking around, right? You need to own that. You need to be able to, you know what, it's my bad. My intent was only joking around. You know what, I'm sorry. You need to own that, okay? Um, and I went over that with, uh, you know, talk about that in a little bit with the client this evening right before, before the show as well. So how you communicate, it's very, it's very important. It's very crucial. So you need to look at the elements to where, you know, how you deliver and, you know, your intent might not be to hurt their feelings or to upset them or disrespect them. But sometimes, you know what, we're human. I'm human too. And, you know, even when I love joking around, I want to make sure I'm not offending that special person or that, you know, person, um, whoever it is. Not, you know, it could be communication, not only with your significant other, it could be the way you communicate with a friend, with, um, your kid even, big time, right? You know, you can joke whatever, oh, grow up and all this stuff. You know what? You need to own that because you don't want to be disrespectful, even though that was not your intent. So own that aspect. Another thing in communication, <clears throat> how you go about it, and I talked about this right before the break, you need to be able to hit on the element to where, um, you know what? If something is said wrong, you said it out of anger, I want you to own that. And part of that. When you own stuff and you apologize and it's sincere about it, oh, I'm sorry, you know what? Oh, my God, you're such a baby, but I apologize. That's not going to cut it and that's not going to work. You need to be able to own it and do so genuinely, sincerely, okay? When that does happen, when you communicate that in a genuine manner and you own your stuff, right? Own what comes out of your mouth, your body language, all that aspect. That is actually going to make communication better, and it's going to make things a lot safer for you two to be able to communicate, to be able to get at. And this, right, how you communicate, it's not just, it could be in the bedroom, too, or on a kitchen counter, tabletop, wherever, right? You can communicate this in a sexual way, and if you don't think you can communicate outside of the bedroom in a safe way where it turns into arguments. If you don't think it's going to affect your sex life and how you communicate about your satisfaction sexually, man, you got a sad, sad, very sad misunderstanding about communication and emotional context of communication, how it's going to affect you you know, in every aspect of your relationship. It's going to throw you on edge. It's going to create a lot of stress. And you're going to be walking on eggshells 
or you're going to be walking around with a chip on your shoulder all the time. So communication is crucial. And again, I, I cannot stress this enough by speaking from the heart and owning, you know, your mistakes and owning, you know, your attitude and everything else that you go on. Um, <clears throat> another Another one, he tells me to grow up and stop acting like a child. Oh, my, I just talked about this. Why? Because I don't like a lot of single women on his Facebook. This is, um, you know what, this is a big deal. And I, I get, um, I mean, I'm saying, yeah, Detroit's a love guru, and I'm, you know, single. So that, it's different. When there is no reason to have a lot of single women on there, and if it is an issue for you, I would want him to respect that. And one way to talk about this is speak, you know what, I feel, you know, I feel disrespected and I, I really, I would feel safer, you know, if you didn't have, you know, a lot of single women on your Facebook page. I want us to have a great relationship and I love our marriage or our relationship that I need to, you know, I'd feel safer if you did that. If you speak from the heart, and not, oh, my God, you got single women all over the place. Oh, my God, get rid of them. That naggy, he's going to get defensive and probably say, oh, I'm not going to be controlled. You're not going to tell me what to do. And it's going to create this aspect. So that's why I say about speaking from the heart and how you feel about that, that you feel maybe disrespected and worried and you want a stronger relationship and you want to put all worries aside. Him telling you to grow up and stop acting like a child you know what? He's acting like a child, being disrespectful by stay, stating that aspect. Okay, he's being a little, he's being not a little, he's being immature himself in how he responds to you and trying to connect with your feelings. I'm going to be blunt. I was blunt. I'm blunt with clients, but I'm also compassionate to where, you know what? He needs to be able to, you know, speak and connect with you emotionally. And how can he make you feel safer? by talking to him, by communicating with him, as well as hearing, right, hearing you, actually hearing and getting how you feel. That is going to be important, and it's all you feeling a priority, and what is he doing to show you he is a priority, and that you don't have to worry about the single women on his Facebook, on your, you know, on his Facebook page, that you wouldn't even have to worry about them. But I also don't want you to be a fool either to where, you know what, he needs to connect with you. And if he doesn't, and if he doesn't want that, and if he doesn't respect you, it's not out of control. It's about making you feel secure. Then you might want to get some professional help. Um, if it's me or somebody else, I know a lot of people listening to the show all over the country, England. Um, I have people even in uh, the Philippines. uh Crap, Brazil, Mexico, all over listening to the show, and I'm very flattered. So, and I do, I do Skype sessions too, or, you know, Skype like sessions, um, you know, video conference calling, if you will, for people not in the local, you know, Metro Detroit area where they can see me in person. So I do that, and that would be an option. Or if you can see a reputable, you know, professional in your area too that might accept uh, your insurance. So you, he, I don't know how else to describe that. He he is being immature and childish and just getting defensive and he needs to connect on those feelings. So I'm trying to I'm trying to help you in a way maybe he can get connected with your feelings that you feel you want a stronger connection, you feel safer that way, and you're not trying to control him. Speak from that. And if he still doesn't care, um, you know what? If you say, oh, no big deal to me, it doesn't bother me, whatever, you're going to BS yourself, right? Let's face it. You're going to be BSing yourself to, ooh, got something in my eye, sorry, that, you know what, It's the resentment's going to build up, build up, build up because you're already, he's not caring how you feel for one thing, and that resentment, it, it's going to blow up sooner or later again. Or, you know what, you're going to numb it out where you don't care, and it's going to feel like you're going to you're selling yourself out and what's important to you. So, however you look at it, it's not a positive, it's not a healthy situation for yourself or for your relationship. And I want him to understand that and get at the depth of how you feel. That is very very it's crucial, okay? And you mentioned I am so hurt since he did what he did. I I know that. Uh we talked, we you know, I'm not throwing your name out there. 
we talked, you know, a private message back and forth a few times, um, you know, in my spare time when I could to try to help out. And that's one situation which is leading us to, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> oops, sorry. Sorry, people, I lost my voice. Um, to when, you know, it's actually a great segue in a way. I'm sorry to hear you're having problems and so hurt so much. But when do you know a relationship is over ended or the marriage is ended? Um, there's a few signs. And I know it's, you know, sort of unique for me to talk about this because I'm all about trying to save relationships as if at all possible. I'm all about that. I want people to try everything possible, try 100%. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. There's no regrets, okay? However, if you are busting your butt, you want to seek help, and you want to work on a relationship, and your partner is not willing to look at themselves and not willing to help and work with you on that situation, it's going to come to a point where you need to, do I really deserve this? Do I, you know, I'm tired of being treated like crap, not a priority, right? Right? not feeling love, not feeling respected, not feeling desired, and it goes on and on for a while, it comes to a point where that resentment and all that hurt and everything, it's going gonna, it's gonna to rip you apart as a person, the core and the essence of you as an individual. And then it comes to a point if your partner isn't willing to help and work on a relationship, if it's not that important to them, then maybe, maybe it's time that you call it quits and you know what, maybe move on. You might have to file for a divorce, separation. And sometimes I, I tell people, and I told an individual uh, this evening that, you know, sometimes you can, you know, okay, I'm sick of this. I've talked about it. I spoke from the heart, and I'm tired of doing this and feeling alone in the marriage or the relationship and not feeling important and craved and desired that, you know what, here's divorce papers, Um you know what, here's divorce papers, I filed, here they go. By doing that, I tell people what's going to happen is usually it could be, you know, three things, okay? Once, one, they're not going to do anything, you end up going through the divorce proceedings, okay? Two things, right? They're going to maybe kiss your booty for a week, couple weeks. Oh my God, everything's great. And then they're going to fall back into the same pattern because they just, you know what, it's what they do, right? They make everything, put a band-aid on it, then they go right back to the way it is. You know what, you can buy into that, right? And wait, you know, and see if it does go back to that situation. Or by filing or getting divorce papers or, you know, threatening to break up, it might jar them and wake them up enough to where actually it's going to make a lifelong change and they actually are going to wake their asses up and realize that the relationship or marriage is, you know, worthy of them, that they are, that you are important, okay? So those are the three elements that could happen when you, you know, maybe go to end a relationship or end a marriage, but I don't want people to put a Band-Aid on it and all of a sudden, you know what, you get an argument, they buy you something, and they treat you like crap again, and you know, treat you like crap goes on, you, you know, get hurt and all this stuff, then, oh, I'm sorry, they buy you flowers again. Then they go back and disrespect you, name, call you, and it's that same pattern. And you need to realize that maybe that issue is with them. I want you to look at yourself and, you know, understand maybe what your role is in the relationship and understand what your role is, you know, in them treating you a certain way. But it comes down to the point where it's not all your fault. They need to own their stuff. And if they're unwilling to do that, and they're always, you know, out, you know, constantly, they have no time for you. They don't want to spend time with you. They don't want to make love with you. They don't want to talk with you. But you know what? They're always busy, but they have no problem going out to the bar with friends, doing a hobby. She's out with her friends all the time, more than spending with you. He's out with his friends, more than spend time with you. You might need a wake-up call and look at why am I tolerating this behavior? Why am I in a relationship where I don't feel loved, desired, you know, all those things I mentioned. And maybe I need to wake up and realize that I do deserve to be loved. I do de deserve to get treated with respect. And I love myself enough, you know what, to get out of this situation. And, you know, those are the more difficult situations. 
there's not abuse. There's not maybe so much verbal abuse or, you know, physical assault or physical abuse type situations or addiction aspects. Those might be more, you know, easier. I'm saying maybe cut and dry to get rid of. But, you know, when that's not going on, it still could be an unhealthy situation, even though they're not physically abusing you. They're not, say, there's not an addiction that's been going on forever. There's not, you know, the verbal abuse, name calling on a daily basis isn't going on. It's just maybe you feel so neglected and that you're not a priority in a relationship and they're not doing anything to change it. They're not doing anything to evolve and grow and show you how important you are. So now you need to be able to show yourself how important you are to you. And I say this all the time, you know, with people that have kids involved, it becomes a lot harder. But then you need to look at the situation to where, you know what, my kids deserve to see me happy and they deserve to not only hear what a healthy, happy relationship or marriage is about, they need to witness it. They need, you need to model that, okay? And it is, it's very, very, very difficult when our heart and all these things are, you know what? All these things are flying up and it's emotional. It's very difficult. And you can also speak to, you know, like I said, speak to a professional or me about those situations and try to, you know, I'm all, like I said, I'm all about you busting your butt and trying 100% before giving up big time. But they also need to make that effort. And it comes to a point where I tell people your heart, heart might be bleeding about wanting to do it or, you know, not wanting to do it, I should say. But then your gut's telling you, you know what? It's never going to change. And it, my, it, it hurts, man. I, I Believe me, my clients are not just, it's not just a business. You know, what I do in my office here, I actually, I care about clients. I, I don't want people feeling unloved and not desired. I, I love, you know, people being happy and feeling in love and having couples re ignite and, you know, just have the passion and the love back again. And it's not just abandoned. It lasts forever. That's what I love doing. So, um, but that's not always possible. Okay. <clears throat> well, I am going to say good night to everybody. Okay. Everybody have a very nice night. Hopefully the show was very informative and insightful and gave you some insights that can help you in communication skills, communication styles you know, speaking from the heart, not the anger, big time, right? Commanding respect, watching your voice tone, and also your nonverbal communications. And when you, someone is talking to you, your significant other, put the damn phone down. Don't watch the TV, okay? Listen attentively, right? Tell them you're important enough. Not only tell them, show them they're important enough for you to communicate and that you're going to hear. Remember, if yelling, screaming goes on, you know what? Own it. What did I do to make you mad? What did I I don't want to hurt you. What did I do to hurt you? And by that, it's going to lower the pressure. It's going to lower the defensiveness. And you know what? You're going to be able to communicate a lot better, okay? My website, again, theartofrelationships.org. Check it out. My book, The Relationship Guide, Tools to Ignite. Ooh, love and intimacy. Check it out on Amazon ebook and paperback formats people happy hump night stay connected right i'm here greg dozinski detroit's love guru licensed professional counselor relationship sex specialist helping you have the relationship you crave everybody have a good night take care bye-bye peace peace